welcome to Tim Ridge Church Online. I'm Pastor Johanna, and we are so glad you're joining us today. Next Sunday, February 27th, we're celebrating baptism. If that's your next step, you can get the info and register at timbridgechurch.com slash baptism. And don't miss out on Couples Night. Pastor Nick and I want to personally invite you to join us. If you're engaged, married, or looking to get married, then register at timbridgechurch.com slash couples. This event will be next Sunday night, and dinner and childcare are provided when you register. Next Sunday, we are also partnering with Convoy of Hope with their One Day to Feed the World. Check out this video. The greatest gifts in life are the ones we don't even realize we've been given. The resources to provide. The confidence certeza, in supply. The belief seguridad for enough the power of a meal is often underestimated but should never be overlooked for decades convoy of hope has been giving hope through agriculture initiatives disaster relief women's empowerment children's feeding programs and more and one day to feed the world helps make this possible the security that comes with a guaranteed meal can ignite the belief in and practical path to a better life Please partner with us as we continue bringing other children and families to the table. You can get more information about that at convoyofhope.com slash one day. We hope that you'll partner with us. And for all of you who continue to give to support the ministries of Timbridge Church, we want to say thank you. Generosity is at the heart of who we are, and we're thankful you're a part of that. You can give in a variety of different ways today from our website, timberidgechurch.com slash give to Venmo by giving any amount to at Timberidge Church. You can see the ways to give and we want to thank you and let you know that it matters. Okay, we're in week three of Relationship Playbook. Let's jump into the message with our executive pastor, Mike Harrison. Hey everybody, welcome to our online service here at Timbridge Church. I'm Mike Harrison, your executive pastor, and I get to bring you the third message in our Relationships Playbook series today. And so let's just dive right in. I thought I'd dive right in by telling you, hey, I got a confession to make. I got hooked on these, uh, on some videos online, and the subject line that intrigued me was like the words like pleasurable, enjoyable, satisfying. And I thought, I'll see if I can just show you one. And then some of you might think, well, guy, can you show that kind of stuff in church? No, I don't know. And some of you are thinking, oh, my gosh, what is he doing? And, uh, well, here's what it is. I just thought I'd tell you what those videos are. Not those videos, not the S videos, you know, the, the subject matter we never talk about in church. It's ear cleaning. I got fascinated by watching people get their ears clean. I know weird but aren't you glad it's not the other things you were thinking about so i thought i'd talk to you also about a subject matter that for some of you is like hey that's gonna be a great subject for me you're like dude you're just weird and for some of you're going i don't know if we should talk about that in church and again it's not the s word but it is the v word it's the word vulnerability the vulnerability is a big thing that we got to learn to talk about. Now, uh, what I'd like to do, if you are just now exploring Jesus and his claims that one, he's God, and two, that he's your only ticket to heaven, today you're off the hook. I mean, what we're going to look at today is really, it has been directed strictly at those of us who have given our lives and put our trust in Jesus. So you get to look back and go, hey, do I really want into this whole gig? Because this is a part of this life of following Christ. And so you get to step back and look at it. But here's what I hope is that you will listen because I do believe the things that are here will help your relationships. But I really believe that at the end, that maybe you will decide, you know what? I think I want to lean in with Jesus. I think I want to put my trust in him. And that's our hope for you because we believe that that is where the truest of holistic, wholehearted, relationships and life begins is by knowing Jesus. So let me share with you the big idea. The big idea is this, that relational intimacy requires vulnerability. That if we're gonna share relational intimacy, we're gonna have to learn to be vulnerable. That intimacy requires vulnerability. And so I'm saying, is that even in the Bible? It really is. Jesus 
had this encounter early on when he was picking his first followers. He found a brother and he said, hey, uh, come follow me. And this brother ran off and found his brother. And here's his brother's response. The guy's name was Nathaniel. Here's his response when he's told by his brother that, hey, we found the Messiah, the guy that's going to save the world, change our everyday living circumstances, make all things good, and one day take us to heaven. We found this guy. He's from Nazareth. And, and all of a sudden, Nathaniel goes, can anything good come from Nazareth? I mean, really, anything. Has anything ever good come out of there? It's like saying, can anything good come from Brownwood? We're not sure. And that's what Nathaniel says. And this is Jesus' response to that. This recorded by one of those first followers who was probably an eyewitness to this relational meeting between Jesus and Nathaniel. This is what Jesus said. There is a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. That's recorded in John chapter 1, verses 43 through 49 is the whole story. And you'll find those words of Jesus in verse 47. He's saying, hey, here's a guy that what you see with him is what you get. He's the real deal. He's not masquerading. He's not putting it on. He's just giving you who he is. Now, let me take you back to a verse that Pastor Joe shared in our first lesson in the Relational Playbook series. Remember that where she says, hey, don't be an asterisk? That lesson. In Romans chapter 12, Romans was written by Paul who was first a Jesus hater, then became a Jesus lover and Jesus follower. And he wrote to some Christians that gathered in the city of Rome. And he wrote them, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. So here's the question. How do you do this? How do you love from the core of your being? How do we experience a life where we aren't faking it to make it so that others who are watching us know that we're not faking it? And again, this writer, Paul, who became a church leader, wrote to another group of Christians met in a city called Colossae. And he wrote them some things about the things that get in the way of vulnerability and the things that enhance vulnerability in their relationships. So let's dive into those today. So if you have your Bible, I'd encourage you to open it up uh, to the book of Colossians. It's really a letter that's, record, that's in the scriptures. And um, if you don't, you can find it on your app any Bible app you have. And if you're new to the Bible, let me tell you, the Bible is kind of divided into two halves. There's the left half and the right half. The left half we call the Old Testament. And it's the history of God having relationship with a group of people and how he worked through them and worked in their, their lives. And then he built a way for them to begin to know that one day a Savior was coming. The New Testament, the right half of your Bible, is the fulfillment of that, that Jesus comes on the scene, and it is Jesus showing us who God is because he is God and shows us how to have a relationship with God and how to live our very best life here with God and with others. So we're in Colossians, and we're in the third chapter, and this is what Paul wrote down to those Christians there. He says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. He says this kind of stuff gets under God's skin because it destroys our lives in a way that we can never understand the depth of it, but it really bothers God. And then he writes, you used to walk in these ways. He said, hey, those things over there that really bother God, you used to actually do them, and you're not doing them now, so Act like they're dead, bury them, and don't visit the grave. He says, you used to walk in these ways in a life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these. And he has this other list, and here's the list. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. He says, you got you to get rid of this stuff. He says, don't lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and you put on your new self which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator here there's no gentile or jew circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave or free but christ is all and is in all he's going hey there's this new life you got to put it on there's this old life you got to take it off and reality here's the deal skin color nationality where you're from economic status what you do for a living none of those things matter anymore it is all about jesus in you 
and how you live toward others. Therefore, he says, as God's children, he says, in light of all the stuff we just read, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bear with each other, and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord. We the word Lord there. Forgive as Jesus forgave you. And over all these things put on love, which binds them together in perfect unity. Here's what Paul is teaching us. To live an exposed life. you got to take off relationship killers. you got to take off the things that are killing your relationship with God and with others. And you got to put on relationship builders. So you got to take off the things that are killing your relationships and you got to put on the things that are, will build your relationships. See, putting on what makes us one builds unity. When we become one, we are whole. We are complete. We will lack nothing. We'll be able to give and receive love without deceit. We'll be wholly present in every moment with every person. So how do you start living an exposed life? How do you take off the right stuff? And how do you put on the right stuff? And here's the deal. We know it's really hard to do this. It's a lot easier to fake it. It's a lot easier to stay relationally distant because we've been burned before. We've been hurt. People made promises to us they didn't keep. People let us share with them and they went and blabbed it to somebody else. We've, been ex we've experienced gossip and hurt and all kinds of relational emotional injury. And so this won't be easy, but it is doable. So here we go. Give, let me give you a couple ways that we can step into taking off and putting on the right stuff. We're going to have to be brave and embrace the suck. If we're going to take off the wrong stuff and put on the right stuff if we're going to get rid of the relational killers and put on the relational builders we got to be brave and embrace the suck that thing of the terminology embrace the sucks actually comes from bull riding the bull riders know once they jump on the back of a 2500 pound animal that wants to fling them into the atmosphere it's going to be eight seconds of suck but if they can endure the eight seconds of suck they win and that we've got to do that. We've got to make the choice to take off what is listed in the Bible reading today and put on what it says to put on. We need to put on a love that is compassionate, a love that is kind and humble and gentle and patient, a love that's willing to forgive, even though we have the grievance against somebody else because they did something to us. And we've got to be willing to help someone else. That's the kind of love we've got to learn to put on. And we've got to be brave and we've got to embrace the suck. And here's going to be the suck. The suck is going to be that we'll run the risk of being hurt again. The second thing, not just be brave and embrace the suck, but we got to find a friend we can trust. We really have to find a friend we can trust. And I know you're saying, hey, I did that before and it didn't work out so well. I know, I know. But there are people that are trustworthy. And you can be one of the become the people that is trustworthy to someone else. Look at how the, the trustworthy people live and listen to what they say. You want to find someone who's moving in the same direction as you want your life to go. And here's what I would tell you, just a shameless plug. It's why we want and push all the time Timber Ridge life groups. By getting in a small group of people that you can see eye to eye and do life deeply together with and build relationships with. We're in that small circle where what is said in that circle stays in that circle that you can r risk going, hey, can I tell you something about me? Can I tell you that I'm hooked on ear cleaning videos and I don't want you to think I'm really weird? But I encourage you to jump into one of those life groups. And the third thing is this, step up and own your story. We're going to have to learn to step up and own our story. Anyone who's been through recovery knows the freedom that is found when they can finally say these words, Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm a guy that really battles insecurity. And just in case you're wondering, that is a true confession for me. My name is Mike, and I battle insecurity all the time. 
You see, owning our story, it helps us remove the secrets. Once we're comfortable with who we are in every chapter of our story, though we may not like every chapter, those are the chapters that made us who we are today, and they'll help us get to the place we want to be in the future. But when we own our story, and someone comes up to me and says, Hey, Mike, you're really insecure, man. You need to get over it. Hey, Mike, I notice this about you. When you're insecure, you do. And all I have to say is, yep, you're right. I'm insecure. And this is how it comes out sometimes. And I'm really sorry. I'm not threatened any longer. Those words don't have to hurt me anymore. I just acknowledge that, yes, they're true. It's a part of my story. And I'm becoming somebody new today. So here's a few questions for you. What relationship killers are killing your relationships? I mean, we've all got them. What do you say we get brave, we embrace the suck, and we just admit them and choose to put on love? We just own them and say they're not going to own us anymore. How do your relationships with your spouse, kids, family, and others need to improve. How would they improve if you did this? If you just embraced and just said, we're going to get rid of, kill off, take off the relationship killers. How would those relationships improve? And can I ask you, what's keeping you from finding a group of trustworthy friends? I know you may have been hurt, but do you really want to live isolated with relationships that are just, God, they're just shallow, and you know it. And here's the thing you know, that we were made for more. How do you know that? Because when we get hurt by someone else, it actually hurts. The hurt is telling us we actually want more out of our relationships. So what part of your story do you not want others to know? What part's keeping you hiding and pretending that you're not who you really are? Owning your story, I mean, all of it is going to take time. It's going to take, it might even take the help of a counselor to get your arms wrapped around it. But if you'll be brave, if we will choose to step up and own our story, our relationships will begin experiencing the wonder of oneness and unity we will get better and be known for intimacy. So this is what's expected of those of us who follow Jesus. Take off the relationship killers. Put on the relationship builders. That's what's required of us. And what we know as his followers is that because he lives in us by his spirit, that the spirit of Jesus living in us, we call it the Holy Spirit, gives us the power and the strength to become whole and complete, to take off what we need to and put on what we need. See, trusting your life to Jesus is the only way I have found to get God's power working in your life. You'll have to be brave. You'll have to trust him as your best friend and you're gonna have to own your own story. But if you will, you'll experience a relationship with God like you'd never dreamed possible. You will know him and experience a freedom of being fully known and accepted by him just the way you are, but with the power to become who he intended you to be. And you will discover that he will give you the power and the strength and the courage to embrace the suck, build new trusted friendships, and own your story. And this is how you can step up. This is how it began for all of us. Here's a simple prayer I'd like to lead you through. Jesus, I want, it, I want your power to take off what is killing my relationship with you and others. And I want to learn to put on love and grow in my ability to give and receive it. Today I learned in order for that to happen, I need to put my trust in you. So I'm doing just that. I trust you to be the leader of my life. I acknowledge that I have not lived with any regard to you and have thought that I could do this life without you. Now I know I can't. So I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to lead me. And while I don't understand it all yet, I'm committing to learn how to trust and follow you. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, or something like it with me as I prayed, I would love to know that. 
So here's what I'd ask you to do. Would you text me your first and last name plus Jesus? So your first and last name plus the word name Jesus to this number, 254-485-2114. It's 254-485-2114. Because we want to get you some material and we want to celebrate with you this new life, this new relationship you have in Jesus. So let me thank you all for joining us today online. We hope to see you sometime here on our campus in Stephenville. And I hope today's talk has helped you learn to live more of an exposed life, a life of vulnerability and a life without faking it.